This is NBC 10 News. Right now at 6 o'clock, police go door to door evacuating 100 additional homes in the wake of the Paulsboro train derailment. But first, the search for a missing 13 year old girl and the adult police say she ran off with after inappropriate conversations online. I have no way to contact her. Don't know where she's sleeping, what she's eating. A very worried father tells NBC 10 News he just wants to have his daughter back. The 13 year old girl vanished after meeting a 20 year old man in an online chat room and tonight police believe the pair are together. NBC 10's Marissa Brainy is live at Radnor Township Police Headquarters and Marissa, where do things stand right now? Well, Renee, they can't find these two. They can't track the girl's cell phone, and she's been missing now since 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Now, police say 13-year-old Savannah McMullet is likely with 20-year-old Ashley Hereford, who is from Virginia and now wanted on a child corruption charge. Police say the pair had been communicating and developed a relationship online. Now, a Radnor Township police officer actually stopped Hereford outside McMullet's home Sunday night because they say his behavior appeared suspicious but police were not able to find anything to hold him on. When the girl never came home yesterday, her father reported her missing and police made the connection. They discovered what they call an inappropriate photo online shared between the pair, which led to Hereford's arrest warrant. The girl's father says he just wants her home safely. Her phone's off. I have no way to contact her. Don't know where she's sleeping, what she's eating. just hard. I want to know I'm not mad at her. Just come on. We did have a picture of them in the Brimoire section on one of the electronic mediums that we were looking at. So that's one piece of information we do know to be accurate. Where they are now, we're not sure. Uh, we do want to make you aware that they definitely could be by a transportation facility, in particular in Philadelphia. Now, police would not say where online they saw that photo of McMullet and Hereford. Uh, they do say that they believe the pair is traveling via public transportation. If you have any information, you're asked to call Radnor Township Police. We're live in Radnor Township tonight. Marissa Brainy, NBC 10 News. We're moving as swiftly as, as we can, considering the very complicated problem we have. So says the U.S. Coast Guard tonight, even though it admits that Paulsboro residents are frustrated by the slow cleanup of a train derailment in their community. Now they have expanded the evacuation to 100 more homes, and they are going door to door right now telling people to get out. That evacuation zone is now from Spruce Street eastward to Mantua Creek and from Monroe Street southward to Broad Street. And we have live team coverage here on this story tonight. Let's begin with NBC 10's Doug Scheimel. Doug? Well, the Coast Guard is number one, expanding the evacuation order. They are extending it from this Saturday to this Sunday, and they are also increasing the number of residents who will now be affected by that evacuation order that has been in place since last Friday. Question. Police started going door to door to let residents in another 100 homes in Paulsboro know they now have to leave as part of an expanded evacuation zone. It comes on a day when the Coast Guard was feeling mounting criticism of their handling of last Friday's toxic rail spill. How well prepared are you in handling this and, and are you the right lead agency? We are absolutely the right lead agency. The Coast Guard is leading this cleanup because the chemical spill happened in a waterway used by boats, but it admits it does not handle spills like this very often. Yeah, and Paulsboro going? residents and officials were getting frustrated. Why is it taking so long? Why hasn't it been done yet? I didn't even know the Coast Guard was involved in it. I don't know why they would be involved in it. You'd think that like an environmentalist cleanup crew would be involved in it. The Coast Guard says this is a unique situation. We have a rail derailment of hazardous materials over and in a waterway with a bridge. That level of complexity, we have a very uh, toxic and unpredictable chemical that we're dealing with. They say debris has kept crews from pumping out the last seven to 800 gallons of vinyl chloride since Monday morning. Instead of trying to get around those obstructions is we're gonna end up adding a liquid that'll dissolve the remaining vinyl chloride. We're gonna add that liquid up into the, to fill partially fill that rail car and then pump that solution out into back into a tank car. 
Uh, the Coast Guard says they expect that process in a best case scenario to be done by this Sunday. At that point, they hope to be able to bring the cranes in, start re removing debris, and start removing uh, tank cars and getting people back into their homes. But there is still an evacuation order to contend with. They are asking people to go to the St. Michael's Mutual Club in Gibbstown. That is the assistance center set up by Conrail to handle people who need lodging. If they are unable to find lodging through that assistance center, the Red Cross says it is setting up a new shelter to handle this expanded evacuation zone at Kingsway High School in Woolwich Township. Uh, we are told anybody who can't find lodging through Conrail should check with the Red Cross for that. Live in Clarksboro, I'm Doug Scheimel, NBC 10 News. All right, Doug, and now new tonight, an exclusive interview with one of Conrail's top-ranking administrators. NBC 10 investigative reporter Harry Harrison wanted to know exactly what happened last Friday morning on the tracks in Polesboro. Conrail hadn't said much about whether the train derailment could have been prevented or about the history of the bridge. Harry tracked down Conrail vice president and chief engineer Tim Tierney just hours ago. Anything you'd like to say to the people over there who are upset and we're, to the folks who are watching we're, and being concerned we're, about them. We're working through it right now, and I think we have regular updates with our with our media consultant, with the township, with the uh, first responders, and with all the federal agencies, and we're working very closely with them. We're trying to give consistent information so that there's no uh, misinformation being put out there. Now, the NTSB says it may release more of its findings later on this week. And as we've been telling you, the weather is playing a role in all of this. Winds could push chemicals in the air southeast by tomorrow. So for more on that now, let's go live to meteorologist Sheena Parveen. Sheena. Yeah, Tim, and the main thing that we have been watching with the winds is the switch in wind direction and how the winds are going to get windy as we go through the day tomorrow. Now, we've been seeing calm winds in Paulsboro since this accident happened, and that was not good for Paulsboro because it's allowing those chemicals to just kind of sit there. Right now, we're still seeing very light winds, three miles an hour in Philadelphia. We expect them to stay light tonight, and it's not until tomorrow when those winds start to shift and pick up. So let's look at the future wind. As we go overnight tonight, we'll keep that south wind around five to 10 miles an hour where it'll become more southwest, more westerly overnight, and then tomorrow we'll get a northwest wind anywhere from 15 to 25 miles an hour. We could see winds gusting up to 35 miles an hour. This will be dispersing any chemicals in the atmosphere down to the southeast with a northwest wind. This would then be blowing to the southeast through New Jersey. Now, again, we are going to be watching the winds very closely here, but tomorrow will be the windy day, and tomorrow is when we do expect these chemicals to be dispersing through parts of New Jersey. So good news for Paulsboro, maybe not so good news for areas to the south and east. And of course, for more highlights from this afternoon's news conference on the train derailment, you can always go to NBC10.com. That's where you'll also see the disaster in pictures. If you didn't get a chance to get outside today, boy, you missed out. Yeah. Near record warmth has been moving through the area. Some places today uh, topped out over 70 degrees. Unbelievable. Sun shining bright today in Trenton. We saw many people walking around without jackets or long sleeves. Some even decided to go without any sleeves at all. Oh, but 14 years ago, it was even warmer. We pulled this video from the NBC 10 archives. It's from December 4th, 1998, when we hit a record temperature of 73 degrees. She's looking good in Philadelphia. NBC 10 Chief Meteorologist Glenn Hurricane Shores here now. And Glenn, how close did we get to that record of 98? Well, we were several degrees away from it today. We were actually closer to the record yesterday with our uh, 67 degrees. That was only one degree shy of the record. We're down to 58 degrees in Philadelphia now, kind of averaging around 60 degrees across the area. The average high is 49 for this time of the year, so that is quite unusual. We had a couple of showers very, very early this morning, and now there's another round that's going to be coming in. This is with the cold front that's going to put an end to this really warm weather. And so as we go through the evening, temperatures drop, but they only drop slowly because of that southerly wind that Sheena was talking about. By tomorrow morning we get up, it's going to be pretty mild, but the temperature isn't going to rise tomorrow, so be prepared for those changes. I'll have more on that and more about the rain coming in with the seven-day forecast in just a few minutes. Philadelphia police are one step closer tonight to finding the driver who hit and killed a woman in King Sessing last night and then just sped away. Grocery store surveillance cameras captured both the crash and the moments right before it happened. Here you see 52-year-old Deanna Teal walking home. 
She was approaching the intersection of 48th and Chestnut. Now this angle shows her walking across the street. Oh, this is so hard to watch when a gray Chevy Tahoe hit her. Police say the driver was speeding and may have run a red light. The driver didn't stop. Teal died at the scene. Because that was reckless. That was really reckless. They got out the car and ran. This morning, authorities found the Chevy Tahoe six blocks away from the scene on Larchwood Avenue. It has New York plates. Police say they know who the SUV belongs to, but aren't saying who it is, and no one has been arrested yet. Trenton police are investigating a quadruple shooting tonight. It happened just after 3 this afternoon on the 200 block of Spring Street. Police say one of the four shot was critically injured. That victim was shot in the chest. No word on the condition of the other three. Now, at this time, there's no word on what prompted the shootings. Authorities say they have uncovered a plot to break two murder suspects out of the Chester County prison. Salim Williams and Shamik Heinsen are awaiting their fates in unrelated homicide cases there. Detectives say they intercepted letters and phone calls between these men and two women on the outside. Now, the women are identified as Sarah Ann Lombardo and Jamila Rozier Gage. Investigators say they plan to use tools to shatter protective glass in the prison visiting area, hand the men a gun, and then allow them to escape in a car. And they crafted a devious plan by dangerous criminals to break out of our prison. They actually had purchased these items and were practicing on glass around them to see what would work best. But the good news is this idea never got past the planning stage before authorities swooped in and made the arrest. These women are now in custody. Former Penn State President Graham Spanier is asking a judge to loosen his bail rules to make it easier for him to travel. Spanier is accused of covering up complaints against Jerry Sandusky. The former assistant football coach was convicted, as you know, of sexually abusing boys. Spanier wants to be able to visit his second home in New York and go to Europe. Prosecutors say the request should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Delaware County man who shot and killed his neighbor for making too much noise will spend the rest of his life behind bars. 73-year-old James Delavecchia of Ridley was sentenced today to life in prison for killing Scott Robbins in October 2011. Delavecchia opened fire on Robbins as he left his home for work. He was angry that Robbins was too loud in building a shed. Robbins' stepdaughter was also wounded in that shooting. Police in Ardmore are looking for the thief who walked away from a Wawa with, of all things, a sandwich ordering machine. Here's a look now at the suspect. Authorities say the man stole the computerized machine from the store along Woodside Avenue. This happened on November 24th. According to officers, the man unhooked the screen, placed it under his shirt, and then walked out of the store with it. This device is valued at about $1,600. Police are now looking over surveillance video from nearby businesses to try to find the man. Delaware Governor Jack Markell goes to Washington. He and a group of bipartisan governors spoke with President Obama at the White House today to address the fiscal cliff. The delegation sought assurances from Washington that any deal struck not shift financial burdens to the states. The governors say they want flexibility from the federal government on mandated programs to allow them to do more with less. Medicaid was a particular concern. Markell called the meeting productive. He's the chairman of the National Governors Association. Next here tonight on NBC 10 News at 6. Home values are increasing everywhere, but maybe not where you live live. We have news that may make you reconsider selling your home. A baby with a tumor that stretched from her tailbone to her feet. The critical decision her mother made to make sure this little girl survived. An incredible warmth over the last couple of days. You know that's going to change, but for how long? The warmth may be making a comeback. I'll have that forecast next.